Yeah, you should see Elizabeth Taylor, you know, riding in a in a in a like about a 1958 Austin Healey convertible with Montgomery Cliff up the coast highway, right, wearing Foster <laughs> Grant sunglasses and and, a, and like a sh- some uh, scarf, you know, around her, around, you know, around her hair. Circuit 19, you know, like I said, 58, I guess, kind of Circuit Butterfield 8. Yeah, yeah. when that was actually about 63. <laughs> You know, that, and I love um, that, that that falling string at the beginning, the falling string around. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> it just sets up the song. It introduces the song to me so well. It's just reminiscent of "Worried Mind" by. I mean, it's it's been in a lot of songs. I, I, what comes to mind to me is "Worried Mind" or Ray Charles's, uh, you know, great hit or or, or Patsy Cline's "Sweet Dreams." It's yeah. very much, much similar to those two pieces. Yeah, and it really is a welcome mat right at the top. You yeah, know. it's the opening of the door, if you will, yeah. on to that scene that I described in my own head of, you know, somebody going up Coast Highway in a convertible. Uh, we got Dwight Yoakam in the studio. I'm Chris Doritas. Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW. That um, is uh, Heart of Stone. You can find that on the Gone CD. It's the latest studio effort from Dwight Yoakam, who appears this week, Thursday the 13th, and Friday the 14th at Universal Amphitheater. Um, thank you for the, the great set you put together that we heard last hour and Oh, you're this welcome. Morning. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I just raided my uh, CD closet. I, I've got, you know, I've, I, a couple of years ago, I, when I started buying the Billboard uh, top rock hits collections from various years, and, and it's that Rhino puts out reissues, and same with the R&B stuff, because I had a jukebox in my old house in this in this kitchen, and I've got it still loaded. I'm moving it to my, my office. I don't have any, I don't have space for it right now, uh, and it was so much fun to just go in there. It was for me kind of a, a it's a memory album for me. I see. Because I associate uh, uh, with visualization of my, uh, the, the visual images of my life very directly, uh, I, I, I associate with musical memories. Uh, and that's what I did. And, and, and just kind of raiding that closet, I was just dragging, you know, uh, stuff off of that albums that I had, just various out al- various albums that I that I could find tracks that I remembered that I loved and and wanted to you know, I guess given some idea as to what I, what uh, I heard from the time I was a child. Yeah, uh, we missed out a little bit of Johnny Horton. There's some things that are obvious <laughs> and I've talked about in the past, the Buck Owens thing, yeah. the Merle Haggard things, but I kind of threw in just a uh, hey, if you will, you know. You know um, a bit of the eclectic mix that I, I grew up listening to. I knew that was coming. That yeah, I, obviously. And it's the memory of the of these uh, this listening experience, this this radio upbringing that that went into the making of Gone. I mean, well, it's were... what me- went into making guitars Cadillacs, and led to ultimately that expression being extended as a musical metaphor to Gone. Yeah, uh, Gone is uh, the abstraction, if you will. Of guitars, Cadillac, which is why I chose to put the painting by Hans Burkhardt in there uh, as as an illustration of the affinity that I feel that music has to, to to the visual arts in that way, and and what I've come to realize, abstract painters were were doing the, the you know the real talented painters who were legitimately uh, abstracting from orthodox painting. In orthodox drawing and sketching, these forms of expression, whether it was Gorky who taught de Kooning and Burkhart, you know, in the 20s and the 30s to do this, and they were disciples of and extensions of, uh, you know, people like Picasso and, and Brock who were disciples of Cezanne, who, when they saw his show at the Paris Salon like in 1907, they both looked at each other and said, We're doing this. We're doing it wrong. Everything's wrong, and they left, and that became that's what led to cubism. And and, and and trying to make myself more literate about that, I discovered how the it had an affinity to what the jazz players were doing, like Chet Baker, uh, Thelonious Monk, all the, the the hybrid cats, and in pop music, the hybrid players, as in you know, or in country music, in country pop, everything is an extension of the previous generation's yeah. expression, I think. Yeah. Uh, for the true, pure artists, that's what they're doing. They're not imitating. Uh, there may be a bit of emulation, but it ultimately, whether it's the Beatles on Paperback Writer, em- emulating the Beach Boys' good vibrations, by the way. John Lennon expressed to a friend of mine one time, 
who he said, what were you doing, like a Cajun thing there? He said, no, no, no. He said, it's the Beach Boys. Yeah. They were huge Beach Boy fans. Absolutely. And Good Vibrations had just come out. If you check, Paperback Writer came out not long after Good... And it was only a yeah, single, no. you know. It was never on an album, Paperback Writer. Yeah. It was a single release. And that's what they were... Paperback, paperback... I'm keep digging a good... <laughs> da, 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 building yeah. those vocal cords. You know, that was... Back to the hybrid thing, I mean, clearly that's... You know, uh, well, I'll never escape. See, Ralph Stanley. Yeah, I'll never escape where I was born. That was there, in the air. I heard my grandmother singing that way. <laughs> that to me, I don't call bluegrass. I call it mountain music. Mm. You know, bluegrass is kind of the festival term for it. But you know, 